Let your Bible say amen. Let's stand for the reading of the word. I forgot to say that last week. I'm not going to say that. Try not to say that again. Let's stand for the reading of the word. And guess what we get to get into today? We're starting the armor. It's taking us 16 weeks. You get to the armor of God. This will probably take us, I don't know, I have no idea, four weeks, five weeks, but it's very powerful. And we're going to break it down, maybe, just maybe like you may not have heard it before. So turn to Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 6. We finally made it to Ephesians. <laughs> Isn't God good? All the time. Eddie, can you turn off those blinders? I know I'm pretty and everything, but they're going to have to see my pretty in the dark. I feel like I'm being, I feel like a plane's coming, there you go, I feel like a plane's coming in on them, there you go, let's move this one, these right here. Please, you just need it, I thought. Ephesians, chapter 6. Verse 10, y'all ready? Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, that's much, much good. God is awesome all the time. God is awesome. Yeah, we start now. We're gonna. We finally. We're trying to tell them we finally. We're finally doing it. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Ephesians chapter six. Everybody got it. Yes. Is my mic on? Is it working? Yes. Can y'all hear my mic? Can you turn it up and down? Is that got control over? Okay. I, I can't tell when it's. There we go. It's on. There you go. I can't tell. When it's on or not. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally. Don't say finally. finally. There's a reason why God put finally there. It's because so many Christians think that spiritual warfare is only mentioned in the last part of Ephesians. But actually, if you read the book of Ephesians, the whole book is about spiritual warfare. The whole book. It's about relationships. It's about handling troubles amongst ourselves. And when you get into the fifth chapter, wow, when I'm doing marriage counseling, the fifth chapter, man, oh, man, do I, I dwell in the fifth chapter uh, during that time. But now, finally, he said, okay, I told you all this other stuff. Now, finally, finally, we're getting down to the meat of it, all right? Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord in the power of his body. Put on the whole armor. Y'all say whole. The whole armor of God that you may not fall in the hole. You don't see that in there? Put on the W-H-O-L-E armor so you don't fall in the H-O-L-E of the devil. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Put on the whole armor of God you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for you wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. He keeps talking about the whole armor. Have you noticed that? He didn't just breeze over it. Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And then we got all to stand. Stand. Wow. Having that all to stand. Stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the God. Word of God. I will keep saying the Lord. Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Don't just say amen. We'll just stop it right and say amen. amen. Amen to your word, God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, Lord, and you are on your throne, God. We know, Lord, that you're working in us things that we can't even imagine. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint each and every person here. I ask you, God, to minister in a way that only you can. Lord, help us, God, to see your armor in a whole different light today. Let us know, God, that you are in control no matter what. Amen. Y'all start. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Y'all say this for you. Get out. You're in control. You're in control. 
no matter what. Say one more time. We know you're in control no matter what. Now on the way down, shake somebody's hand and tell them the past is behind us, the future is ahead of us, God is with us, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. A wife, you be seated now. A wife had a handful of used clothing. She said, I'd like to donate this used clothing to charity. The other said, why do I not just throw them in the trash? That would be so much easier. The wife said, but there are poor, starving people who can really use all these clothes. Guys, how many times have we opened our foot? I don't know how to put in. The other said, honey, if anyone who fits in these clothes, they're not starving. <laughs> I'm taking my life in my own hands when I said this joke. The husband is currently recovering from a head injury. <laughs> glory, glory to the Lamb of God. All right, I see, I see. There was a whole lot of not sure what to do about that one, whether to laugh or not. <laughs> oh, I saw little Walter, he was really getting, he was really getting down while he, he was jumping up and down, and I happened to look up and get a glance. <laughs> I thought Jeannie was jumping up and down. I said, her back was really doing good. She's jumping up and down. <laughs> I look, it was Walter. Oh, I was like, glory to God, her back is healed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Occupy till I come. We're going to be talking about this. Now we in this stuff. Now we're here. We've been trying to get here all for 16 weeks. Now we are here. Nobody can tell you that you haven't been first in spiritual warfare. Amen. Occupy till I come does not mean take up space. It means to take a stance. It means to be productive. It means to take back all ground. It actually means conduct spiritual warfare. That's what it means. We need to be on guard all the time because you may not think of, if I'm not in church, it's not spiritual warfare. No, 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 no. Spiritual warfare happens every day all over the place, and we got to be ready because we never know when it's coming our way. All right? We just read this. Of course, I love this. I love this. You get through this not because you are strong, but because God is. Woo! One more time. I love it. You're going to get through what you're going through not because you're strong, but because God is strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Of course, we've been going through this long, but now we get it. Now, here we are. We're at this point. So be be now constant here, not just at church, but after church, before church, by when you're at home, when you're at work, be strong, infused with inner ability in the Lord, uh, which is only found in one place, and that's in God, this stuff that we're having here, and His overwhelming, irresistible power, and His powerful, strong arm, which is all part of spiritual warfare. So now, Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 16, and 18, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He didn't say we will build it. He said he will build it because the church is not a building. The church is not even an organization. The church is an organism. And God is building us every day. If you let him, God is working with us every day to either help us to grow or we can either accept the challenge because he never, let me tell you, everything that comes our way, when he's causing us to grow, I promise you, there's going to be a challenge and there's going to be a price tag attached to growth. So now, the devil knows. I'll say the devil knows. Get ready. He cannot stop the building of God's church. He can't stop it. And I say to thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell, the smartest, the wisest, the most powerful that hell's got, cannot stop the building of the church. But now let's get into spiritual warfare. He may not can stop it, but he can try, and I got a little line through it, he can try to stop the movement of God's church. Let that sit in for a minute. He cannot stop the building of the church because Jesus is doing that. 
But he can't stop the momentum and the movement of God's church because although the Holy Spirit is within us and around us, pushing us and helping us and empowering us, it's up to us to get up and go. It's up to us to get out. It's up to us to put on the whole armor of God. It's up to us to conduct this warfare. So, although God, the, the devil cannot stop the building of the church, he never can stop the movement. So, do you want him to stop the movement in your life? I don't. Amen. I do not want him to stop the movement. Yeah, I like it today. Like, like we, we had this problem with the sound system, and, and DC said, no, we're not going down. Uh, uh, we might have to go around. We might have to go under. But we ain't. we go through this thing, and he switched back and forth, and finally, we probably some guitars, and he finished on the piano. That's okay. God knew that what greater is he to send us than he to send the world. Satan would love to stop praise and worship. But guess what? He didn't do it. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Now, now, how many times has the enemy stopped the movement of the church through you? How can he stop me? What about if you finally, the trials are coming, and things are happening, you lose your desire. He stops the movement. What about if he gets you distracted? He stops the movement. So it's very important that we understand that when he stops us, it may look very simple and very innocent. But if it stops you from doing the work of God, and I'm not talking about getting out of priorities. I mean, you get your priorities right, and you're having to fight to do this. You keep on fighting. Amen? What does it mean to be ignorant, or, or not, or be, mean not to be ignorant of Satan's devices? He says, we're not ignorant. Paul said, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. How many know that word devices means plots and plans. You know, in engineering, uh, whenever I walked around, when I walked around a fountain or when I walked around a and Gamble, I kept engineering paper. How many know what engineering paper is? It's pre graphed I carried it around and, and I would get called in all over the place. And I had no idea I'd be over here today or over there or the way to there. I got stopped here. And every while I go, I was having to draw plans. I was having to plan everything out and plan it out. But I didn't trust just to keep it in my head. I was planning it out, and I was going to start start this stuff. Maybe we would carry a tape measure with me, and I would start measuring and start writing this stuff down because I wanted to be on top of it. Well, guess what? Satan is on top of it. It's important that we take his place, and we get on top of it. Amen? Amen. It's very important. So watch this. Watch this. Here, here's Satan's strategy, his device, devices, his strategy. He wants to attack you personally. Y'all say attack personally. Now point to somebody and say he's talking about you. Now point back to somebody and say he's talking about me. He wants a personal attack on everybody in this church. Everybody. There's nobody left out. You know, a lot of times when I thought we were being left out of something or we didn't find out about something or whatever, I promise you when it comes to Satan attacking, he has left no one of us out of it. Now, his mission is to, a personal attack through any means possible, to destroy the mission and the movement. God's church. I said this in the beginning of spiritual warfare. Satan desires to affect your thinking, your life, and your relationships. By affecting your thinking, I'm talking about your perception of things around you, how you see things. We all got these, 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 these windows called eyeballs. And these receptors called ears. And so everything's we're, we're getting we're getting fed all kinds of information. And I can't even begin to tell you, I've already forgot, I can't remember how many thousands of stimuli is brought into your mind every minute. 
So all this stuff's going on around us. He wants to, uh, to, to affect our perception so that he in turn can affect how we live it out. That's life. And once he affects how we live it out, then he can affect our relationships. In other words, he wants to affect us, our thinking, our life, and our relationship in order to infect our thinking, our life, and our relationships. It's actually a simple strategy that he's used for 6,000 years. And guess what? It's worked. He doesn't have to even change it. It works. Wow. I want you to think about those things right there. This week, think about last week, think about next week, think about when, when things are starting to get to you, things are starting to, to boggle you down. You think he's trying to get to my thinking so he can affect how I live out my life. So in other words, and then I can affect, affect how I deal with other people. So now, you know, the sharing suffering is a good soldier. That's Christ Jesus. That's found in the book of Timothy. It's written in red, so I can't read it. Ben, you want to read it for me? <laughs> we were riding down the road one night going to the prison in the van and somebody looked over at something out there and said, Benny, Pastor, Benny, what color is that? <laughs> All right. So, Psalm 144, 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, who teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight. Whenever I put my hand on that base, I think about that. He's teaching my hands to war, my fingers to fight. I'm not just beating that base. I am conducting spiritual warfare. When DC was over here and that weapon went down, he went over and grabbed another weapon and picked up another one and kept on going because it's more than praise and worship. It's spiritual warfare. And it's important that you don't give in at every little thing, but you keep on keeping on. Second Timothy 2 and 3. See, we're radically directed, but we're also expected with this. Therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I remember watching Saving Private Ryan, and I remember uh, when Captain Miller was coming up trying to get some real, he needed to get somebody that could, a, a stenographer, somebody that could speak German and also could write this down. He said, we got a corporal over here, and while he's going to get that, while he's going to get that corporal, he starts looking, because he's been, he just come up Omaha, Omaha Beach. He's got his assignment. He lost men at Omaha Beach. He, he's up there. He's already lost over three quarters of his command through these conflicts. And he's been in this hard, hard, hard situation. And while he's waiting for the corporal, it just really struck my eye. And I thought about this. He looks over, and the guys over there that are doing it, they're taking care of their they're military too, but they're taking care of the command. He looks over and sees them pouring hot coffee. And you see the smoke coming up, and you see him looking at that. And then they pick up these great old big thick sandwiches and these big old sandwiches, and he's eating MREs. And he looks over at that, and I see him. I, I, I think about that. These soldiers, what they had to endure. But there's time. There's times that you have to endure too. Do not give in. Do not give up. Because I promise you, we're not on a playground. We're on a battleground. It's very important. Now, now let's get a little deeper. We're getting ready to do the first, first, first piece of armor, but let's, let's, just, let's just get into it. I love this. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. I uh, give you power to tread on scorpions, serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 and 19. In spiritual warfare, there's two types of power. Two. Two. What's going on? Okay? Get ready. You want to write this down? Please write this down. Because so many people get this mixed up. And when you get it mixed up, you may wind up wondering, how did I lose that? Well, I'm getting ready to show you. In this scripture, in this scripture, there's two types of power. First, there's ability, dudamus, over all the power, the ability, of the enemy. Do them. 
I promise you, I'm not as strong as Satan. I know my dad, my, my daddy, I'm my daddy, but my children must have thought sometimes I was the devil. This he's shaking his head. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they were in church one day and they're talking about who the devil was, and the little boy's on the front row beside his brother, beside his buddy, and says, "This devil stuff. He's probably like Santa Claus. He's probably daddy." All right. And then there's exousia. Exousia is authority. Now, just to really drive this home, Daniel, when he first became a deputy, he was an itty bitty thing. He honestly, he was skinny mini. They put weight on him. They put about fifty pounds on him. But to start with, he was skinny mini. And I remember I was in Woogies. I remember the old Woogies, not the big one, but the little one. Between 17 and 33, that little bitty woogies. One Saturday morning, my wife and I were in there eating. And I looked and I saw a deputy car. And it drives up into the stop or to the stoplight. And he's looking both ways. And I said, I wonder if that's Daniel. Then he pulls over across the street to that trailer place. And here he comes, he comes getting out, old mini, old skinny mini. He's getting out, and he stands in the middle of the stoplights. And here comes the funeral. The lights are changing, people are going back and forth. And Daniel stepped out in the middle, and he ran. Guess what happened? The cars stopped. They did not move. He waved on the hearse and then he got in his car and he went on the front of him. The funniest thing to me was when he got out of his car and started walking over to the stop by luck he was walking over to Woogie's and half of the Woogie's customers ran out the back door. <laughs> See those this? And everybody stops and he looks over at the hearse and he does this, and the hearse starts moving, and he holds his hands up, and nobody moves. Now, that car has got dunamis. It's got power. And that you're driving the Ford, it's got power. <laughs> I just play it. <laughs> I just play it, y'all. I meant to say Chevrolet, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look, look. That car had dunamis. You try to stop a car. You get in front of that car and stand in it and tell him to power break that thing. You're going to hold that car still. And that's just an idea. That did happen to a Chevette one day because I was holding it. I told my friend I was stuck and I told him, I said, now I'm going to rock it. And when I rock it, I want you to, I want you to pop, pop the clutch and back out. I didn't know you didn't know how to drive a speed, so I mean a stick shift. And I'm rocking that thing and it's hurting. And I'm still rocking, I said, well, get it ready. And I want you to pop that clutch, you pop that clutch. And the car went, ooh, it went, ooh. I walked down looking, he had it first gear. I'm so glad I didn't have a power car. Now, that car's got dudamus. Dudamus is a regenerating power. It's a power that's more than just a, you got power, it means it can get stronger, 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 and stronger. And think about it, here's that car, but when Daniel came, if I'd have stood out in the middle of the road and did like this, I'd have got run over. Why could Daniel, who was a lot smaller than me, stand up and everybody stop? Because he had on that badge. And although, although he didn't have any physical power to stop those cars, he had the authority to stop it. And if you would have hit him, you would have just hit him, you would have been attacking a government official, and then you would have served time in jail and maybe even prison for getting him because he had authority. How many in here understand that we may not have the power to take Satan head on, but we've got the authority. 
Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. I've given unto you. Quit falling for every little thing the devil tries to throw you away because you may not have the power, but you sure got authority. He says, look, you got authority. Watch this. There's two types of attack. He said, I'll give you authority to step on serpents and squirrels. It's all the power of the enemy. Look, two types of attack. Serpents. Serpents. The serpent that it's talking about here means the kind of serpents like on the Alma Maleta, which is these serpents may not be very big, but once that they don't even have to even bite you. All they've got to do is let their their fangs brush your skin, and you'll be dead before you hit the ground. So now, the function. Satan wants just to kill you, graveyard dead. Just ruin your spirituality where you don't even care anymore. You just don't even care. And you're just spiritually dead. And then there's the scorpions. The scorpions attack the central nervous system. So although you're not dead, you wish you were. Because now nothing's working right. You're, you're, you can't control anything because the scorpion has got a hold of you. So it's amazing that Jesus picked these, these two words and he picked these two attacks to mention about what's coming against the church. There's a lot of doomers out there that's coming against this church, but we got authority. Not in our name. But in the name of the Lord. I heard Daniel many times say, Stop in the name of the law. Husbands, you are the priest of your home. I don't listen, I don't know how this is going to sound, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. Hubbies, quit waiting for your wives to be, to be to be the spiritual leaders of your home. God give us authority as men of God, to stand up against the devil and to fight for our families. Amen? So, he used Dumas, Exusia, serpents, which will kill you, just take you out, spiritually be dead, or surf or scorpions, which in turn just make you virtually useless. And he says, I give you authority over these. So now, full armor of God, and the, uh, the helmet of salvation, faith as a shield, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the, uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, shoes and a readiness to announce the good news of, the, of, of peace. The Bible says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means that when somebody that's not, that you, one of the worst things you can do if you're a Christian and you're having a problem is go to a non-Christian for advice, especially spiritual advice. Because they have no idea what's going on in the spiritual realm. Our warfare is not carnal, meaning that it doesn't make sense to the normal man. It doesn't make sense to the carnal man. A lot of times it doesn't make sense to you when you're fighting. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is where the belt of truth needs to be working. Because when Goliath stood before Israel for 40 days and 40 nights. He had them paralyzed. It's like the scorpion. He had them paralyzed. They were shaking in their boots. And he never fired a shot. Some of you over here right now there's things going on in your own life. You're thinking that you're going to lose. Or you're thinking that there's no way God can work this or that for you. And Satan has got you paralyzed. Because he's got imaginations running wild in your head thinking there's no way you can win. There's no way! Fear's running rampant. Crazy thoughts. So really, here we go. Let's, let's move on. This is good stuff here. This is powerful. 
powerful stuff. I love this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, in God for the pulling down of strongholds. I love that picture. You know we have impenetrable armor. Armor that cannot be penetrated by Satan. Let's look at here. Ready? Realize that you're equipped to win. But the only way you can win this battle is to put on the whole armor of God. It's amazing how you go to a restaurant and they'll tell you, we got a chicken special. And everybody at the table says, I want a chicken special. And you go to the first guy and says, well, I just want the dark meat. And I want collards. And I want corn. Anyway, I want a chicken special, but I want white meat. And I want potatoes. And I want peas. I want the chicken special too, but I like a combination dark and white meat. And I want cabbage. I want okra. They read the menu, but they picked out the same thing, but they were choosing things at the same time. Paul knew that we, if we're not careful, will make the honor of God a menu from God. Right there's a spiritual waitress waiting to take our orders. Which spiritual armor are you going to put on? What part are you going to use? I, I like to use the helmet of salvation myself. Well, I like the breastplate of righteousness. Well, but I like my, my feet shod with the, good, with, the, with, with the gospel of God. Yeah, all the know, it isn't pick and choose. It's put on. And because of this, I want you to watch this now. This was a bad thing happening in Ephesians. Paul was having to fight these people that wanted to pick and choose and cherry pick how they were going to do it. So in the Greek, it's called the imperative tense. What he did was, he's not making a suggestion. Well, if you want to, put it on, pick, pick and choose. You can put it on a helmet or a breastplate or, or you can do No, 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 no. He said, it's time to realize that you have a formidable enemy who is out to take your life and your children's lives and to destroy your seed. So he says, in the strongest kind of command, he says, with great urgency, I want you to take immediate action. And I want you to put on the whole armor that comes from God. Don't pick and choose. Put it all on. Put every bit of it on. Because in the battle, every bit of it can save your life. So now, in this warfare, let's see what this is. Oh, there you go. Blessed be the Lord my strength that teaches my hands to fight my fingers to war. I love it. I just love it. We have radical protection. If you look at the armor of God, there's three categories. Three categories, and each category has its own merit for fight for right. In the fight for right, each category. So we're going to start category one today. We'll finish category one one next week then we'll go to category two and then to category three because if you just try to fill it all up all at one time it can really 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 get confusing there's the belt of truth why don't you look at that belt just kind of look at it for a minute Look all things that's attached to it. Versus the armor of consistency. Have your loins 
girt or surrounded by truth. What does that even mean? The Roman soldier had a tunic. And when he was running into battle, he would take his tunic to the four corners and he would tuck them up under his belt and he would make shorts. So it gave him freedom. That belt of truth. Also that belt of truth, the breastplate tucked into it. The sword hooked to it. The dagger hooked to it. All the pieces of armor except for the helmet and the shoes hooked to this main piece of armor, the loin, girded with truth. It held the soldiers' weapons. It held the soldiers' medals. Matter of fact, Many soldiers wore that belt in combat and out of combat. They wore that belt any time they walked out of that house, they had on that belt. Many lives were saved because of that belt. You know, if you watch a man in the military now, he's got all the stuff up here. He wears it up here. But in that day, his rank and his medals wrote his belt. It had some type of protection right here, as you just saw. This belt was very important because without it, the breastplate would fall off. Without it, he'd have to hold all his weapons in his arms. Without it, nobody would know who he was. Without it, he would, could not be reminded of the battles that he's already won, fought and won. It's so important. Also, on that belt, he, had, he kept water, and he kept food. Many times they marched quite a ways and it helped them. In church, praise and worship is very important. It, it, it plows the ground and gets it ready for when the word is being brought. Prayer is important because that prepares our hearts and we talk to God. Fellowship is important. But the most important thing in the church and the most important thing in our own lives is the belt of truth. Why does the belt of truth that holds all of our armor that we find water and nourishment and bread? What is it that leads us on that we should never go out of the house without? is the mighty, mighty word of God. So the very first thing, the loins guard the truth. That belt of truth held the weapons, held the medals. First Peter 1 and 3 says, gird up, or gird afresh up the loins of your mind. Meaning, don't be tangled up in all the things that's going on around you so that you can't think in order to fight the battle. John 8, 44 says, Our enemy is a liar and the father of it. Let me do a little thing. I didn't have, have it up here. There were devil there in John 8, 44 is Diablos. Take Diablos Split it down the middle because it's two words. Bolo, which means to throw, and dia, which means to penetrate. What it speaks about is a continual blow and a continual beat of lies against the child of God. Just a continual flurry of lies that come at us all the time and beat us and beat us and beat us. If we don't have any armor, we have no protection. These lives, if you're not careful, will penetrate 
And use the word penetrates first is right here. And then it moves down to here. And you begin to believe lies that have no merit. They're not true! He repeatedly beats you with lies, beats you with suggestions, beats you with accusations, beats you with allegations. He bombards you with slanderous assaults all day long. Until he wears you down and you finally begin to entertain that thought. Wow. The Bible tells us to cast down those imaginations. But you know what? It's kind of hard when you're being beat and beat and beat and beat, and especially if you're not wearing the belt of truth. Because how do you fight a lie with the truth? Always. Always. So now, there's a difference in fact and truth. Matthew 14 tells us that. It's a fact. Man is heavier than water. He can't walk on water. But the truth was come. And what did he do? He walked on the water. Because truth is greater than fact. you got to put on This he said a while ago, he thinks he's read at least two times in these Bible studies they've had. He's read the Bible twice. This year. Wow. You're doing good, son. I've given Bibles to people. And I found out all they read six months later, was right here. I remember Fred Sanford said, Fred Sanford stole one from a hotel. Ramon said, we got one downstairs. <coughs> Why didn't you steal the bottles? Dad, pot. He said, he said, I'll put this one upstairs. I want double coverage. <laughs> Just having it doesn't protect you. Unless it's in your shirt pocket and a bullet hits you. It's going to protect you. You've got to have it in here. It's so important to know what the Word of God says. So, this you get ready to come play something. I'm not going to, take, I'm not going to keep you a whole lot longer. I love it. Let's just put it down in simple, just simple, simple. Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Here it is. You stand. And he says, stow on all this time. You've done everything to stand. You stand. You stand in truth. You stand in righteousness. You stand with the gospel of peace. You stand in faith. You stand in salvation. You stand with the word of God. You stand praying. Wow. Pull on that whole armor. I love this. The God who is, who was, and is to come. Revelation 1, 4, and 8. I've taken the inventory, I take it often, but I've taken the inventory of the last days very strongly now in a time when just because one group says it's okay, then it's okay. Another group says it's not okay, then it's not okay. You know what? What matters is what does he say? I'm so tired of you, not you, I feel like the media and them out there telling me what to think. If you say it's wrong, but it says it's right here, that's one thing. If you say it's right and it's wrong in here, that's another thing too. We need to know what the Word of God says. 100%. We live in a day like the age of Gideon. 
where God's army seems to keep decreasing. And Satan's attacks seem to keep increasing. Wow. at least once a week, every week of my life. How you like them old graveyard, old graveyard, them old jailhouse conversions? They don't last, don't you know that? They don't last. And I go, well, you're right, some of them don't. In the SHARP program, there's been people get out of the SHARP program and a month or two later, six months later, a year later, they're back in the SHARP program. There was one guy that went through it four times. And I was sitting there, just worked too long ago, I'm talking to 12 guys, the one guy's been there four times and I said, have you ever done something and, and, and then you had to do it over again and over again? And I looked over at him and started to smile. But then I realized the guy beside him had been there three times and the guy over here had been there twice. They were 
wanting to it and into it. We got the mess. It's obvious the Democrats don't have it. It's obvious that the Republicans don't have it. It's obvious that the independents don't have it. It's obvious that China don't have it or Russia has it. The only person, the only people that's got what we need in this world to bring the world to peace is the church. Satan can try, but he can't take his down. Don't be afraid.
you really forgot to use you again. But nobody looking around. If you fall into one of those categories, you've been hit by the serpents or the scorpions, and you find yourself either in a dead situation or you find yourself useless because you have lost your ability to, to do what it takes. But nobody's looking. We just put that hand up and say, I've, I've been under those attacks. I've been under those attacks, and I'm ready to come out of it. Remember, you got Azusa. I don't have to have dunamis, although that's coming next. I don't have to have the dunamis to do battle because I got Azusa. I got authority. 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 And I know God's got this. There's other places where God does give us dunamis, so I'm not going to try to take that away from right now. Right now. I'm focusing on Azusa. Maybe you're just in spiritual warfare. You might not even realize the belt of truth that held all your weapons and all your armor in place to give you freedom to move around in the fight and the battle. And you're seeing God to take care of things for you to help you understand and move in a very powerful way. No matter what, we're going to pray this together. Ready? Everybody pray this with me. Father, I love you. And I thank you for never giving up on me. I thank you, God, that you got this, even when I don't. And I thank you that you know the way when I don't. And I thank you, God, that you will accept me as I am right now. But when I leave, I'll be different. And I thank you for it, God. I ask you right now, God, to help me cling to the armor, cling to the belt of truth. And I just cling to it, but put it on. Learn my word. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God is so awesome. And on Tuesday nights, we're talking about stress. <laughs> Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Thank you, Son's name, and I do say, Amen.